got this new cutting mat for $4 at Daiso, the Japanese dollar store. It's 36 by 26 centimeters. Okay, and this will protect my our homemade table. No knives in here. That worked out awesome though. This is my first real pair of closed shoes that can be worn outdoors. I initially made the pattern by taping over my shoe last, which is this foot form here, with green frog tape. I drew the design I wanted onto the tape, and then I peeled the whole thing off and pressed it flat down onto a piece of paper. I added about 18 millimeters around the edge in order to have some leather to gather underneath the foot when I stretched the uh, shoe upper. No wonder it don't fit. I picked the wrong foot. I make better choices next time and I don't do the same dumb crap. Just using what I got. It's always a challenge. If I had all the materials in all of the world, well, then this wouldn't be a hobby, would it? Be a professional. Whoever thought of this was brilliant. You see these all the time to. So frustrating. This is a uh, good quality bike tubing. Did it work? It makes a great gripper. If you stick it before it dries, then it's rubber cement, but if you Let it dry or until it's not tacky, and then push the two parts together, then it's a permanent bond. Did I really drop tacks all over the floor? Well, I guess I better clean that up. So cool! I realize there are special pullers for these. I don't have any. I'm trying to work with what I got. And within my means right now. Being my first pair of closed shoes. No, non sandal shoes. My limited knowledge. I'm working within those today. I'm not looking anything up. I'm just kind of studying my process, thinking about, you know, if you know everything that's in a book, 
well, maybe it's going to prevent you from thinking of your own idea or coming up with your own way to do something that's completely original. So, I mean, although I love to rely on other people's expertise, sometimes I want to try. And, you know, sometimes I fail because of that, but sometimes I just want to give it a try, see what happens. I mean, what's the worst that can possibly happen? A failure. The best thing that could possibly happen would, would be that I discover something you know, that nobody's ever done before. I'm initially going to cut away the excess. It said this was for leather work, so I pulled it out of the package. The package had a picture of someone's foot on it. Apparently they scrape off dead skin or something with this. It's disgusting, but anyway, this is also dead skin. Try under there a little. Get a tighter bond. I'll come back to that. Come back to you, come back to you. Spectacular. First pair. First pair of shoes. Okay. Let's not set our expectations too high. Okay, I waited a few minutes. We're going to start on this side. bond them onto the bottom. Okay, my new cups survived. They are hefty.
They are cool. You gotta take those down to the studio and get them fired. I've stacked up and glued five layers of heel and glue on this side. I roughed it up with a razor blade so it would stick better. And once this is not tacky anymore, I'm going to sandwich those together. My husband just replaced the tubes and tires on his bicycle. So this is his old bike tire, which I'm going to use as just the bottom base. This is, the, this is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, quite literally. Typically, I guess a double rough sided um, leather would be used for this, a very thick leather. But again, this is about working with what I have. Looks awesome. It's a little tacky.
Ow, it stings. Thank you, Karzanian, for the emergency medical gloves, which I will now misuse. Thank you. I love useful gifts. One cool thing about these shoes is that they are stitchless, which means you and me and anybody else can make them. All you need must have good quality contact cement. In order to make these shoes stay on better, I'm gonna make a, a heel strap for them. I hope you enjoyed making shoes with me or me making the shoes and you watching because you were totally lazy and you didn't do any of the work 10 hours <laughs> these shoes took me about 10 hours to make uh, for beginning and so I'm aware they aren't perfect but my goodness they are comfortable and um, they're pretty cute and I'm happy I think it's a good start I think they're a really good start and um, if I hadn't uh, broken the bench grinder I could have made a prettier shapelier heel. <laughs> that was unfortunate. In the meantime, not the worst thing I ever made. My husband thinks they're the best thing I ever made so that was pretty cool.